You're listening to Nightmare on Film Street. The current time is 666. Traffic is clear ahead from here to the afterlife. But it's hell outside. For the next hour, you're on Nightmare Time. So, let's give a grave welcome to our hosts, John and Kim. Hello again, fiends, and welcome to Nightmare on Film Street. Horror for the casually obsessed. I'm John. I'm Kim. And we are here today to close out our Superior Sequels double feature with Tom Six's super disgusting Human Centipede 2 full sequence. So gross. So, so, so gross. (laughs) And yet, better than its predecessor. That's what we're talking about in these two episodes. Last week, we talked about Hostel 2, Eli Roth's Hostel 2, which, if you ask us, a hundred times better than Hostel 1. And Hostel 1 was decent. Hostel 1's good. That's, yeah, right? Human Centipede 2, though, you... Mm, Complicated. Yeah. It's comp- we'll get into it. Um, but if you have not seen Human Centipede 2, John... Fuck. You want to give them <laughs> three good things about Human Centipede 2. Tell me, tell them, tell us. Ooh. Three good things. Yeah, three good things. Three huh? G O O D. I might have to go to dictionary.com and double check the definition before I start G-U-D. rhyming these off. U D. Three reasons why you should watch it. Three reasons why you might like it. Three good things about Human Centipede 2. The special effects are amazing. Gory as all hell, but amazing. Yeah, super gross. You feel it in the pit of your stomach. Impressive, <laughs> nonetheless. Impressive is the right word. Number two. High contrast black and white, baby. I I don't care when the movie came out, 1931, 2007. High contrast black and white, I'm there. Very true. Uh, We do not have Nightmare Alley black and white where we are. I don't but want to talk about it. So jelly of all of you guys that get to see it. We please. also don't have Moonfall. So yeah, I'm John's, very mad. John's like having a thing with the theater right now. <laughs> <laughs> there's just there's let me down <laughs> at every <laughs> opportunity. But the last good thing about Human Centipede 2, it's maybe one of the best critiques on censorship and specifically censorship in horror. Unfortunately, you kind of have to sell part of your soul away to learn that because this movie, this movie takes a lot out of you. But yeah, uh, as, as gross as it is, Great commentary on censorship in cinema. And not just censorship, but also I think just clapping back at unfair critiques. Oh, yeah. And people reviewing genres they don't enjoy. (laughs) Very true. But, Kim, before we get into our full discussion on The Human Centipede 2, what's keeping you creepy this week? We have been catching up on a ton of trailers. There's uh, a bunch of stuff coming out. And it seems like in the last week or so, week or two, there's been a lot of trailers dropping, right? Yeah, and, and uh, trailers for trailers, because oh, <laughs> Jordan Peele's nope. Uh, we're getting the first snifter of it, Super Bowl Sunday, the, the actual trailer. Oh, okay. Yeah, the trailer is premiering. I so. did not did not even occur to me that, one, this Sunday is the Super Bowl, and two, that's where we would see it. I'm like, Sunday's a weird day to drop a trailer, but fine, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I'll much... skip church this week to watch the new Jordan Peele trailer. This is how much we care about the Super Bowl. We were walking the dogs today and we were like, oh, we should go to the theater on Sunday. It'll be so empty. Yeah, that's the plan. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. But outside of trailers for trailers, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see Nope. I mean, hey, if you want to see like three shots from the movie, go ahead and watch that teaser trailer for the theatrical trailer that's coming. <laughs> the trailer for the trailer. Trailer for the trailer. TCM, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That trailer came out like two weeks ago at this point, but I think it's a great trailer. Uh, I think Sally Hardesty looks like a bad ass, and I think Leatherface is going to hack his way through a bunch of characters you already hate and you haven't even seen the movie yet. Yeah, it feels a little Halloween 2018, a little but- bit. I'm very excited for that party bus situation. I would like to see Leatherface chainsaw up that party place. We also saw the trailer for Flux Gourmet, which looks super weird. Don't New know... Peter Strickland movie. Fuck yeah. Don't know a goddamn thing about it. Something about food. And sounds. And sounds. And the sounds of food. Yeah. No definitive date for it yet, but coming this summer from IFC Midnight, The Seed coming March 10th to Shudder looks like pure midnight movie madness. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a creep show vibe. Uh, Comet Ooh. Falls to the Earth. And there's a cute little critter in it, but 
the critter is very, very sexy, it seems. <laughs> He's a very, very sexy boy. Looks a lot like the, the shunting scenes from Society, though, right? Oh, yeah, that's a good comparison. I think, yeah, I think it's going to be a weird gross. one. Gross. Super <laughs> gross. Uh, Men is another trailer that we watched. Alex Garland's new movie. Very A24, just like super cinematography, and I have no idea what it's about, but it had some fun sound pops, and I'm assuming it's going to be spooky. Yeah, cinematography looks fun. Yeah. yeah. Alex Garland, director of uh, Ex Machina, Devs, writer of 28 Days Later. Didn't I he think- do that weird, like... Annihilation? Yeah, it was like that weird purple sphere movie where everybody was plants. <laughs> That's the one, and he's got a new one coming. <laughs> <laughs> And the last one, this trailer actually came out today, Wednesday, the day before the podcast. Uh, the new trailer for Blumhouse's Firestarter. It's a long trailer. Really long Like, they trailer. went full trailer with that trailer. Three-minute trailer yeah, on that I was one. like, wow. And that's directed by Keith Thomas, who directed a little film called The Vigil that we've talked about a bunch on this podcast. Love that movie. Uh, very, very spooky film from last year. Yeah. Last, last year? I believe we saw it at the 2018, 2019 yeah, it, it, TIFF. It had a really long delay. No, it came out, yeah, came out 2021. <laughs> COVID things. Yeah, so I'm very excited to see what he gets to do with, like, big, you know, remake budget. There looks like there's a lot of fire in it. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> the really interesting thing about this for me is that there's been a untitled Blumhouse movie on the release schedule for a while now. Uh, and uh, turns out it's Firestarter, so May 13th, look forward to that. Outside of movie trailers, Valentine's Day is happening next week. Uh, we Don't sound so excited, John. Oh, my boy, I'm not allowed to. <laughs> I'd be like, I can't wait to have a nice romantic dinner with my bestie. Like, what do you want me to say? Oh. <laughs> okay, I hit money on the head there. Yeah, all right. Yeah, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day's next week, guys. Get romantic. Watch a horror movie. Buy a, <laughs> buy a pizza in the shape of a heart. <laughs> that is the primo Valentine's Day plans, by the way. Yeah, we yeah. do it every year. I love it. Yep. I think last year we made our own heart-shaped pizza. It did not turn out. It was just a blob. (laughs) But this year, we are hosting a watch party with the Fiend Club. uh, This Saturday, actually, February 12th. Our theme is loved to death. But we haven't told anybody what movie we're watching yet. Yeah, we've had a poll over on the Fiend Club for the last couple of weeks. And you guys voted the 1981 film, which we're not going to reveal yet, but it has something to do with Valentine's Day. And no, it's not the one you're thinking of, but it might be something that you're not thinking of that could be what you're thinking of, but I don't know what you're thinking of. I no longer know what I'm thinking of. (laughs) Which was released in 1981. (laughs) Uh, We're watching that Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. I don't know what that is in your time zone because I don't know what time zone you're in, unless you're in the one that I'm in, which is Eastern. So join us on Saturday, (laughs) regardless of what time zone you're in. Figure it out yourself, I guess, is what Kim's saying. No, there's a time zone converter on the Fiend Club page, so you could go there. Yeah, that's true. We'll have the watch party open about a half hour beforehand. We'll be playing some music, hanging out, chatting with the fiends. In the spooky speakeasy. Fuck yeah, we got a nice little room built, a nice little 8-bit hangout room for everybody to chill and mingle before the movie starts. Of course, as always, we've put together a trailer reel full of a bunch of weird clips and we've put together some romantic, spooky horror trailers uh, in that pre-show. I'm really excited to hang out and chat with everybody. But all the details to that at nofspodcast.com slash fiendclub. All right, we've put it off long enough. Mm. You want to start talking about a really gross movie? Yeah. <laughs> you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was this a mistake? Uh... <laughs> Find out after these messages. We are controlled. Martin, I'm here today because your mother is very worried about you. He keeps on talking about a centipede with 12 people. (laughs) What does that mean? The centipede can be considered a phallic symbol. Centipedes are very aggressive creatures. Ian, please! Their bite can be very painful. What are you looking at? Maybe he's connecting the pain that a centipede inflicts with the psychological and sexual abuse inflicted on him by his father. There's nothing to worry about. I'm sure it's just a passing phase. Hmm? What is this? 
100% medically accurate. One digestive system? Is this a perverted film you've been talking about? This isn't right, Martin. What you're doing, it's wrong. <laughs> The Human Centipede 2 Full Sequence. It's currently sitting at a 3.8 out of 10 on IMDb, 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, and 1.8 out of 5 on Letterboxd. No one disagrees with any of those ratings. As much as we were surprised at the low ratings for Hostel 2, I think it's perfectly understandable why a movie like The Human Centipede 2 would have... Such a response. Kim, can I ask you one quick question? Mm-hmm. Did we make a mistake? Yes. Was, was yes. this? Yes, we did. <laughs> what is happening? Was watching this the best thing we could have done with our time? Uh, so I oh, I was really worried um, sitting down to record this because I was like, I do not know what to say. I am very confused right now. So I'm sure I've said this earlier in the episode because we record these in sections and I don't remember what I've said already, but this episode is kind of a re-record from one of the very first episodes of Nightmare on Film Street we recorded back oh, yeah. in 2016. So those are no longer on the air because the audio quality was terrible. They aren't mm-hmm. available anymore. They've been thrown off a cliff and they don't exist anymore. But there's a ton of movies off that cliff that we wanted to revisit because, you know, we're, we're different people now. We've changed... <laughs> Our horror opinions have evolved, not really, (laughs) but in the case of Human Centipede 2, John, Uh I think I'm getting soft in my old age. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking too, like maybe we've just aged out, like we can't handle this anymore. I fully remember being of the opinion that, oh, this is in black and white, so the gore is so tolerable. Mm. The gore is not real gore because, you know, it's not visceral and gross and you can watch, no. No, you cannot. You can't be watched. <laughs> this is an unwatchable movie, <laughs> is what you're saying? At least the last 15 minutes, eyes closed in time. But the thing is, the thing, even there, you can't get away because the audio is just as disgusting. That's pretty this bad. could be a radio play, Ooh. and I would still be maximum cringe. <laughs> I don't know if I want to listen to that. But I, okay, so. I am still of the opinion that this is the superior sequel. Like, of the two movies, Human Centipede 2 is better than Human Centipede 1. It's a harder watch. I'll give you that. But I do want to apologize up front to anybody. (laughs) Do we make people watch this? What what do we do? Anybody in the Fiend Club that I pressured to watch this movie. (laughs) We did a quick little little recap episode of both Human Centipede One and Hostel One, uh, because we wanted to make sure that our that we really did think these were the better of the two movies. And I just willy nilly said, "Oh, you gotta watch Human Centipede Two, please, please. If you watch any of these movies, this is the one to watch." I still stand by that, but I should. I should there should have been a bit more of a warning. A ahead huge of it. disclaimer. Yeah, there's like, so much poo in this. <laughs> It's not even that. There is there is so much in this movie that's hard to watch. This is the scattiest movie I've ever seen. <laughs> even even outside of that, there are just scenes of hopelessness and that are re- that really hurt your soul. Like you feel like parts of you are being taken away that'll never come back. Yeah. That said, I still stand by my statement that this is a good movie and you should watch it if you haven't before or if you've always avoided it because people told you it was bad. But it should come with a huge disclaimer that, like, yeah, you really gotta, you really gotta be prepared for arguably one of the the hardest horror movies to watch. There's definitely... A rebellious streak in us, I think, from the, when we were in, like, you know, our 20s and we were watching this. And it was just like, yeah, it's totally great because I can still see the merits of it. There's still definitely things to talk about in regards to Human Centipede 2. But there's just so much poo <laughs> that I can't handle it. I can't. 
I I have passed my threshold of quote unquote torture porn. Like I can't I can't do it. <laughs> it's it's an aggressive watch. Yeah. I, I closing my eyes wasn't enough. I had to plug my ears also. So congratulations, you've done it. Human Centipede Two is exactly what everyone was afraid Human Centipede One was gonna be. <laughs> Thank you so much for saying that. That's the that's the point of this movie. We talked we we talked How de- about it. Hey, it's like limbo. How depraved can you go? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. This uh, this as it, evidenced by the pregnant woman alone. <laughs> yeah. If you've never seen these movies, Human Centipede. Obviously, I'm sure you you understand the concept. It's a it's a crazy doctor who's trying to sew three people together so that they share one digestive tract. It's 100% medically accurate, according to the tagline of the movie. Uh, probably according to zero doctors in the world. <laughs> zero doctors would agree. <laughs> Human Centipede was called the worst movie ever made. And, you know, according to the film censor board. It just got very finger wagged. It got very finger wagged. It got banned. Like, there were. It, it, it got banned. It got heavily. I'm edited, like a housewife with my verbiage. <laughs> and it, I'm not a Karen, but a Nance. <laughs> if, if, you asked, if you asked anybody. Uh, in the in the regular world outside the horror community that had heard about this movie, I'm sure that you had been told that it was the worst movie ever made. I think that was the, just the general consensus was that too he, depraved to exist. Yeah, exactly. And so, Human Centipede Two is kind of a response to that. Not even kind of. It's a it's a hundred percent a response to that. Not not even just in in how it's presented, but like its overall concept. So, I mean. Human Centipede 1, not as bloody and gory as you would expect at all. John, is this your university thesis? Are we getting... <laughs> I guess so. There's no other way to talk about this movie. <laughs> the real disclaimer that I need to give people, I need to start giving people, is you have to see this movie. It's crazy. It's going to be hard to watch. But like the, 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 the tip is you have to watch until the very end. If you turn this movie off at any point, and there are lots of spots that you want to and probably should turn it off you you don't you don't get the full experience unless you make it to the credits do you agree don't don't you think the ending of this movie really wraps it all together in like a genius way i do not understand the ending and okay we're, we'll visit that in a little bit because i don't necessarily think that we should talk about the ending yet okay yeah so i mean just kind of like riffing on what I was talking about a minute ago, like I think, yeah, this is 100% a response to Human Centipede 1. I think the ending really sells that. And if there was anybody who said that this was the bloodiest, goriest, grossest movie they've ever seen, then, oh, look out for Human Centipede 2. I mean, hell, even Tom Six, the director, said Human Centipede 2 is going to make Human Centipede 1 look like My Little Pony. Well, my thoughts are that Human Centipede 2 is exactly the reviews from Human Centipede 1 of the people that didn't actually see it. Everything that those people and the critics that that were just like, oh, this is just too disgusting, this stuff doesn't need to exist, la la la. All of those sound bites, all of those reviews became what uh, was the goal for Human Centipede 2. Yeah, and to be honest, I think he had a different idea for a sequel. And the critical response from people... tainted it and changed it and that's why what we have now is probably the most the grossest and gr- and grimmy- grimmest horror movie ever it's so weird to be of the camp like here's the stance i'm taking that this movie has a ton of merit and i totally appreciate it and i love the approach and the intention and the intent but it's borderline unwatchable for me <laughs> i never want to see it again <laughs> Is that not a credit to how good the practical I effects never, are in this movie? I never, ever, ever, ever want to see the poo coming out of those people's mouths. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, there's stuff in here you can't unsee. You you know a, you know for a fact, though, when they called cut, everybody was laughing. Just, I ugh. bet it was the fucking funniest shoot ever. It had to be hilarious. It's it's a weird time when you're like having a date night and you're watching a movie <laughs> such as this. Most of our discussions while we were watching it were like, so what was the protocol here on like the butt cleanliness and like, you know, the courtesy to your fellow actors? It was everybody on the set like swallowing nothing but Beano and not eating. <laughs> it's definitely a lot harder to manage when you have 12 people in your centipede. The first movie, you got three people. That's no problem. Three actors... 
you you could easily keep track of what everybody's eating, but like you know for a fact somebody's watching Tom Centipede Number Seven eat like way too much at the craft service table. Like, hey man, come on! Like, you know you what? Should you should be you... maybe not having that chili, Tom. <laughs> yeah, goddamn! Put that bean burrito down. We got six more days on this shoot. Just. The shame has to go out the window because there, no doubt recording this was grueling. It probably took a ton of time. There were probably hours spent on their knees in peed form. Well, you'd have to let somebody know if you had to toot. Like you'd have to courtesy. Like, can we take a can we take a five? <laughs> a lot more open discussion on set about farts than any other movie is what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Given that everybody's got to be on their hands and knees, I'm sure you just give them as many breaks as you can to stand up. Maybe you just pretend to take up smoking so you can walk away from everybody (laughs) just to have a fart. (laughs) But I mean, hey, Ashlyn Yenny, who's an actress from the first movie, is in the second one playing herself. She sort of like offhandedly talks about, I mean, it's a little hammed up, I'm sure, but she talks about being on set for Human Centipede and how everybody did like a really thorough courtesy shower before getting to set. Because you would, you'd hope everybody would scrub down. Oh, for sure. Like, at the door. Gross-wise, though, don't you think this is, like, kind of an achievement in special effects? Let, let's, let's focus on, there's several aspects of that. One, the guttural, visceral response. You react to, not just you, me too, me as well, you react to this stuff. I don't like when people have, eat oatmeal on camera. <laughs> like, I- So it, you're it, a bad judge of gross. <laughs> You're like, ew, a foot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, if if I feel in the pit of my stomach that I'm going to be sick watching something, I don't love that feeling. But the other half of my brain says, wow, great work, everybody. You did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Black and white, too, is is a great addition because with all of the gore and like there's so much, guys, there's so much poo. There is so... I love that that's what you're lingering on. The poo there... is the grossest part. I'm fine with like slice. Although when he cuts that butt cheek open and he's like ripping it, oh, that was too yeah. much for me. That was another eye closed moment. I guess the knee slicing. Okay, the whole thing was gross, disgusting. Yeah, fishing around inside somebody's knee cavity with your finger to look for like a tendon oh, or ligament or whatever. He, yeah, when he was cutting the tendons. Oh, okay, fuck, I forgot a lot, a lot of stuff. The, the addition of black and white makes that better because it's almost that thing about how your imagination kind of makes it worse. Oh, yeah. And, and you know how the less you see of a monster, the scarier it is because it allows your m- imagination to run, run wild. Here is that in play with full, like a smorgasbord of gore. Yeah. But we don't get the, I don't want to say the satisfaction, but we aren't given the red viscera. We aren't given those disgusting bodily fluid colors. So our brain has to fucking make them. And our brain can do it way worse than than anything else. Not that, you know, a special effects team can't do a perfect color of blood or can't make wet poo look like wet poo. <laughs> uh, they definitely can. But the fact that your mind has to do it just elevates it to another level that it just... I close my eyes and I'm still fucking seeing it. Like, it's just a waking nightmare of of poo. (laughs) That's interesting because I think it's a little easier to watch as black and white. I think it's easier to watch, but your your eyes are seeing black and white and your brain is not. That's true. Okay, that's true. Yeah. Because I was like, yeah, this this shit's going to be so easy to watch. I can watch this whole centipede be made. No, 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 no. Oh, a stapler? Look at those lips. Ha ha. Oh, God, he's giving them laxatives. (laughs) Yeah. I, uh, you know they film us in color, right? It wasn't supposed to be black and white. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> this in full color? Like, how do we get this past the ratings board? Like, you're not. Now, we've talked a lot about gross stuff. We haven't really talked much about plot. The movie really only has one character, outside of the centipede, Martin. Martin is a human centipede fanatic in Human Centipede 2. Mm-hmm. He's also severely abused. His, he's been severely abused his entire life, sexually, physically, uh, mentally, by his father. And, and his mother. Let's and not... His, and his mom now has become his tormentor th- th- now that her husband is in jail because Martin has, has gone to the police about it. He doesn't say a single word in this whole fucking movie, but he's taken... But clearly he's very convincing because he gets several actors from the first Human Centipede 1 very interested in auditioning for a Quentin Tarantino film. Yeah, there's proof that he can talk because he's left voicemail messages with talent agencies (laughs) because he wants to get actors from the Human Centipede in his centipede. Uh, Ashlyn Yenny, that's how she gets introduced in the movie. Yeah, she thinks she's going to an audition for a Quentin Tarantino movie. And, And I think a 
courteous move becomes the lead of the centipede. And not just a courteous move on Martin's part. She's the star. <laughs> she's the star. She's also, uh, I think that's just like a nice thing that Tom Six did because she was in the back of the first centipede. <laughs> like, this is one hell of a promotion. Martin's a security guard and he just starts kidnapping people from the parking garage uh, to to bring back to his his little warehouse where he can staple them all together into a centipede. But where Human Centipede 1 is clinical and sterile and the doctor is very anal and specific and um, he's matching blood types and making sure that, you know, the centipede has the, the greatest chance of survival. Mm-hmm. Martin is just a hack. Oh, yeah. He... He's not caring for these peds. Um, he's got all of these people kidnapped and they're duct taped. His method of knocking them out is just a crowbar to the head. Yeah, which they get several times over, and right? So, and to, to get several of them subdued, he shoots them first. So half of his centipede has like fucking gunshot wounds. Yep. Yeah, he is the furthest thing from a doctor. He is He's very clearly mad, but not a scientist. <laughs> I, although he has the jacket. I'm running into this problem where I don't know how much I can talk about this movie without talking about the ending. So maybe before we get there, what is your favorite part of this movie? I was going to ask what grossed you out the most. Sounds like it's probably the laxative scene, <laughs> which is pretty gnarly. But what's your what's your favorite part, even okay. if it's just something tiny and simple? Okay, so I'll give you two. I'm going to give you kind of my favorite moments of the movie is when Martin is running around his house or the building or whatever, and the camera is trained on him, and he's kind of just lumbering around because there's almost a like fisheye type of lens. And Martin's such a unique man. He's got very unique features. He's got very round, huge eyes. Oh, yeah, you would totally paint him in like third he, year art class, yeah, right? Yeah, and he's super emotive, and he's such an interesting person to just look at. And I think all of the scenes watching him head on, and the camera's almost like trained on him. Mm-hmm. I love that stuff. I think that cinematically looks fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, my favorite gory moment, one of the, the things I loved the most and enjoyed and was able to sit through was the corpse of his mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when he sits down to eat with her, it, her skull is mashed in, like just a pulp. And there's holes and cracks and crevices, and it looks like coral reef. Uh, but it's actively spurting blood. <laughs> It's sort of wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, that looks great. And it's it's a little bit humorous, which is nice because this movie's got like nothing to laugh at outside of that. I think I think one of the parts that I'm most impressed by is when, this sounds so awful, when he's just knocking that dude's teeth out with a hammer. Oh, I just, so I didn't watch, I didn't watch that. I was an eye closed moment. So you, hey, you saw a few teeth. And then you looked the fuck away. When he was picking them out of his mouth and he was like sputtering oh, with blood. Oh, oh, come on. He has to do that. Oh, you're going to choke I now? I almost gagged again. <laughs> I ga- I will say that I gagged several times watching this movie. You say Martin has no bedside manner. He scooped those loose I didn't loose say he didn't have med- out bedtime Out of his man. throat so he did not choke on them. That is just kind. <laughs> he was choking on them. Actively sputtering on them. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's this movie had a lot of uncomfortable laughter from me. Uh, like I knew that what I was looking at was hurting me. Okay, like, just like, and I did, I did not relish it the same way that I did. There was a scene that I looked away and gagged at while he was going to get a drink, and he, from my reaction alone, he was like, "Oh, I gotta rewind that." <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it sounded like it was honestly one of the biggest reactions that you had throughout this whole movie, Ugh. and I had to see it. Uh, but yeah, I love, I, I, I don't. I mean, I can probably figure out how they did it, but it's so hard to watch him knock that guy's teeth out and think about it as something. Well, they probably found an actor who had teeth missing. That's what, yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a fake mouth and stuff, but blood comes out of there. Like, it is such an incredible appliance that if it's not an entirely fake torso with a fake head and stuff, then... God damn. I was thinking that with the poo coming out the butts, and I was like, these have to be fake butt appliances. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I didn't think about that at all. I just assumed that like the camera was sort of like, there's just a tube that's sort of snaking her way, and there's a special effects guy laying on the ground beside them with a little syringe that he's just like, you know, <laughs> In a out. keg of whatever <laughs> the keg. slurry is. I mean, hey, hopefully it was just like chocolate milk, you know? 
That, and that's what I was thinking too. It'd be cool if if everything had like neon bright colors. So they're filming it, and it's like Willy Wonka Land, but to us, it's just like a fucking shit show. What if that's what it was? They filmed this in color, and all of the blood was was yellow, <laughs> and all of the poo was pink. <laughs> and then, but they were like, "This is dumb. Like, <laughs> let's just make it black and white and call it a day." <laughs> oh man. Okay. Ending stuff. Give me your. Yeah, so I mean the end. The, Download me. So in the end of the movie, the centipede fights back. They rip apart into two centipedes. They try and attack him, including a great shot of Ashlyn Yenny as the as the lead of the centipede picking up his centipede cage and throwing it at him. Don't you fucking love that shot? I, Where she looks like like then it's like a centipede reared up in the air and like it's a hero shot, definitely done from Martin's POV where he's like amazed at what they look like before they try and kill him. But he, one by one, just sort of walks around shooting every single one of them in the head. That was such a downer for me. Huge downer, yeah. I was so sad that he was just shooting them all. It was like, oh, my creation. He, oh, come on, he cries. He cries at the loss of every one of he his He gets so piece. sad when everybody <laughs> dies. <laughs> yeah. He got just as sad, if not more sad, when they wouldn't poop. Like, he was so, <laughs> like, why aren't you pooping? But yeah, so he shoots them all, and then we hear him drive away. That, and that's kind of it, until we're back at the security office, where he's been watching Human Centipede over and over and over again, which is where the movie begins. Because all Martin does is watch Human Centipede over and over. Because as far as I'm concerned, how I watch the movie, everything that we see is in Martin's head. It's an imagination. Okay. Okay. And and to, to explore that further, Human Centipede 2 is what I think the film censors are worried about with a movie like Human Centipede. Like, See, I've got that conclusion, and I don't necessarily believe the same thing you do about the ending. Really? Yeah, so in the ending, which is all plausible that it's all in his head, which I think is a great, that's really cool, but the baby is crying. The baby that was left alone in the car because he kidnapped their parents. So, yes, and... I think this is the first time watching it that I heard that. Was that the same? Was that true for you as well? I don't remember the. Obviously, clearly, I don't remember the first time I watched it because I thought I really enjoyed watching this movie. Uh, I think th I think that's just like an added little bit to say like. Is it true? Is it true? Could question it mark. Be true? And it was all inside his head. Question mark. Or was it? Yeah, and that's so. Yeah, like that's that's how, that's how I watch the movie. I view it as purely inside Martin's imagination. This is him fantasizing about what it would look like if he went and did a human centipede. And the, the movie ends with us not knowing whether or not he actually decides to go do that. Mm. Like, there still exists a world where he does go, yeah, fuck it, I'll, I'll give it a shot. You know, now that I've thought it out, I won't make those same mistakes that I made in my brain. And I think it's also why it's so depraved and twisted. Um, beca because Human Centipede 2 as a film is what people are worried about. They're like, oh, we can't let people see a movie like Human Centipede because they're going to want to go out and make their own Human Centipedes and who knows what disgusting stuff they'll do. H horror movies are too violent. Video games are evil. Yeah, yeah. But what it, what's really trying to say is the most sick and twisted shit that could exist exists in our minds. Like, the, the, the world is bad, don't get me wrong. The world is pretty fucking awful. But the worst stuff that w that could possibly happen is in our imagination. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I think ultimately it, it's Tom Six trying to talk about what people are worried about, like the imaginations of the censors and people that have never seen these movies is actually worse than anything that could happen in reality. Uh, you're hinging a lot on the ending, and so... I don't have the exact same perception of the ending, so I have a little bit of a different takeaway in that it's kind of a uh, a pushback on the fact that, okay, so he's doing human centipede-style killings, but you're saying that that is the only inciting incident to why he would do this vile act or commit murder. That's and, a great and point. And his life is horrible. He's had lifelong abuse. He's got a doctor who comes regularly and gives him medicine. He's with... Who's um, just as bad as his father was. Yeah, Let's be real. and he's with a parental figure, and he's still getting abused. But we're we're putting the blame on on the human centipede movie. So it's it's less of I guess maybe a uh, the artist fighting back on on the fact that society has just picked a scapegoat. Clearly, society is is not addressing the mental health crisis and and all of these other elements. And it's just easier to pick the most obvious thing, like oh well, there's violence in in the content they like. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things, I just don't think it's very important whether it's real or not. 
I think the film itself stands as a commentary. Yeah. Which is why I can appreciate it and not necessarily like watching it. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of where I've come around as well. And that's where it stands. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm never watching the end of that movie ever again. <laughs> yeah. It's not an easy watch by any means. But I mean, hey, neither is Irreversible, Gaspar Noe's movie. I don't think I could watch that movie again. Yeah. I, 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 I pr- But it's same in the same sense. Like, I totally appreciate it. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, it's incredible cinema. Very hard to watch. <laughs> super, super hard movie to watch. But it's also why I'll never watch. It's like climbing a stress hill and then getting up to the top of the stress hill and then you realize you have to climb all the way back down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hey, uh, we're not the type. I, 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 I guess I could say I'm not the type. I don't really seek out movies that are just like, oh, the most depraved thing you've ever seen. I'm yeah. just, I'm just want to watch something for two hours. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, <laughs> no, this was not. This is definitely not the kind of movie we are watching right now. Like personally, I'm glad we revisited it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but I, at, as of right now, I do not have a rating. So please don't ask me. Are you serious? I have you don't. no rating. Oh, okay. I do not. And I think I liked Human Centipede one more. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think I did. Interesting. Yeah, I'm getting old. I still, well, so, <laughs> don't you think, like, this has, like, a deeper artistic statement than the first movie? And Absolutely. That, like, and that its its goals are a little more defined? Yep. I get that you didn't necessarily enjoy it as much, but, like, artistically, cinematically, but where don't you I think? am in the stage of my life <laughs> okay. is I'm looking for the most watchable movie, the thing that I go to put on. And, you know, I was saying this when we were talking about Hostel 2, just how much I love Hostel 2 because it's so watchable. Yeah. And I could watch Hostel 2 anytime, and it always delivers. Human Centipede 1 edges out a little better because it's a little bit safer. Okay, well, we've only ever graded movies on how much we enjoyed them. So I'm not going to ask you to try and change that. I feel I'm a little saddened by it. I'm sorry, John. I can't superior sequel this one. Wow. I totally get it. I totally appreciate it. It's not going to be unanimous, I'll tell you that. It's going to have to <laughs> remain contested because I personally think it's great. And like, I'm watching that third one. We still haven't seen it. I'm crossing it off the watch list soon, maybe by myself. Um, I think I've peaked on centipede ability. <laughs> yeah, I, I love what this movie's doing. I know that it's hard to watch. I personally find it hard to watch. It's going to be a while before I rewatch it again, but I guarantee I'm going to watch this movie again sometime in the future. Yeah, it's challenging. It's hard, but I think it's purposeful, and I think it's done incredibly well. It's not just violence for the sake of violence. Uh, I think there's genuine artists. It's not? There. No! <laughs> <laughs> no, it has a it has a point. You know, it's always weird that it's the harshest, hardest movies to watch that are making a statement about something. But <laughs> I stand by this statement. This is this is I this, stand by. This is the hill message. I'll die on. That this is a movie that's good and people should watch it. And stop telling them to watch. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, if... Hang on a second. I'm just gonna cut John's mic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. No one forces anybody to watch a movie. But that's a, that's a whole other discussion. That that's why I think rating boards suck because no one's no one's being held down and forced to watch a movie, and kids aren't seeking out Human Centipede too. Um. Well, when it hits the theater, we have the internet, John. It's the age of the internet, and that's why censor boards are outdated. Because when it comes to the internet, you can't stop somebody from clicking on something. Okay. So whatever. All right. So we gotta double features. We gotta come to some kind of definitive conclusion because I did not write this. So superior sequels. John says yes. I say nay, which means Hostel Two is the superior sequel, right? Yeah. Were we always trying to find a winner? No. Like, was that the no, idea? We I was just trying to wrap this up. <laughs> So you stop telling people to watch the movie. Okay, I mean, like, yeah, you you want to leave like a like a fucking censor board would. You want to leave this movie unrated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give it. Discover at your leisure. <laughs> I'm going to give it a three out of four. Uh, wow. And I know that's a that's a high rating for a movie like this, but I but goddamn, it looks incredible. It's just hard to watch. It's just super hard to watch. Three out of four, also, don't watch it. That's what I'll say. How's that sound? <laughs> okay, so if you stomach this movie, if you watched it start to finish, or if you avoided it, and if you've heard you've heard enough about it, I think, to get a, a kind of a thought on it, let us know uh, your Human Centipede 2 opinions. You can find us on Discord at nofspodcast.com slash Discord. We're on Twitter at nofspodcast. 
And if you want to hear our thoughts on Hostel and Human Centipede. The OGs. The OGs. Just head over to the Fiend Club at nofspodcast.com slash Fiend Club. For a few bucks a month, you can join your fellow fiends for live watch parties, bonus episodes like that one, and pre-shows that I build for every single one of these episodes. If you want to see, if you want to recreate that theatrical experience of seeing Hostel 2 or the Human Centipede 2 in the theater, we've got the pre-roll for you to play right before you press play on your DVD or your Amazon Prime subscription or whatever. What's your pre-show for Human Centipede going to be? Is it going to be gross? No, I'm not going to do that. Okay, good. You know what it might be? Flowers. Children playing in the field. <laughs> Just a nice little palate cleanser. Yeah. Advertisements for the Christian Council. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but until next time, I'm Kim. I'm John. Stay, Stay creepy. creepy. It appears you made it out alive, but we'll get you next time. Help us to grow the horde. Leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you subscribe. More terror can be found lurking on our website, nofspodcast.com. Until next time, stay creepy, fiends.